Hello and welcome to the third and final part of the analysis for ICAT 11 which is part of our All India National Level CAT Test Series for CAT 18. We saw that ICAT 11 has been classified as a moderately difficult mock as seen here. We also saw in the first two parts that verbal ability was a moderate to tough section. Similarly, DILR was a moderate to tough section. What about quant? As you can see here, the average difficulty level of quant was slightly lower than the overall mock average at around 1.74. What does this mean? Is It means that the average difficulty per question in quant was 1.74, where 1 corresponds to easy and 3 corresponds to tough. So it's actually marginally below moderate, but each question cannot be called just below moderate. They might be easy, they might be sitters, they might be tough. Now, where does 1.74 really stand in terms of its mapping with respect to the actual CAT? In the actual CAT, this section is actually mapped at somewhere around 1.6 to 1.65. So if I look at the actual CAT, I can say that this was more, slightly tougher than the actual CAT in terms of the overall difficulty. So that is one aspect to remember. Now, how many questions should have been attempted? That depends on how the mock was structured at a part by part level. Generally, quant has four parts, arithmetic, algebra, geometry and modern math. So you can take each of them, analyze them in greater detail and identify the questions that should have been solved. Broadly speaking, if you take the quant section of any CAT mock or, or even the actual CAT, you will have anywhere close to 14 to 16 questions that can be called sitters or easy questions. Somewhere around 3 to 5 questions which are tough. And the remaining, again I would say 14 to 16 questions which can be called moderate. So typically we tell students to try and attempt all the easy questions as far as possible. Identify the tough ones and ignore them because it's not necessary to attempt all 34 questions. The key is these 14 to 16 or around 15, 16 moderate questions that you really need to attempt as much as possible. Now, obviously, if they are moderate, it means that they could be classified as easy for some students who are good at that topic or they could be classified as tough for some students who are not so good at that topic. That is where having a wider range of topics to practice from or to be good at a lot of chapters becomes very, very critical when you are preparing for quant in CAT. It's typically, if you develop strengths only in algebra or arithmetic or geometry or modern math, it might so happen that your particular mock has a lot of easier questions from the area where you're not very comfortable and that ends up bringing down your overall attempts drastically. So try and diversify your risk, try and spread your risk in such a manner where you are excellent at a few chapters, yes, but you need to be fairly competent in a lot of other chapters. Don't be good only at a select group of chapters. Having said that, let's have a look at the breakup of these four parts within the section. So here, as you can see for each, the, each of the earlier parts as well, what we did was we had a look at the average difficulty of the section. Now, if you look at this section, very clearly, geometry and modern math have an average LOD which is more or less similar to the sectional LOD, close to 1.7. So, you can say they are at par with the section. But if you compare the other two sections, very clearly, it is arithmetic which is on the easier side with an LOD of just about 1.4. So, obviously, if three parts are below the sectional average, there has to be one particular part which has to drag the sectional average up and that as you can see is clearly algebra with an average LOD of 2.1. Now I'll show you in this mock if somebody was good at algebra or was really banking on algebra, the basics of algebra, he would have struggled in this mock. How? Let's look at each, set, each part of this mock separately. Within arithmetic, as you can see, there are eight questions in all, of which five can be called sitters or easy questions. So
so very clearly this is the area where i should be trying to maximize my score we also so saw that this has the least lod of all the parts within quant so this is the area where i can actually attempt as many questions as possible also when i consider that there are only three moderately tough questions there's no pure tough question as such and another fact that typically the moderate questions in arithmetic are simpler than the moderate questions of geometry or modern maths means that these are far more doable than geometry or modern maths so here the overall key strategy has to maximize your attempts do as many questions in arithmetic as possible as far as this mock is concerned on the other hand when i look at algebra what i see is that this has the maximum questions 11 of which 3 year are tough and if you notice this entire mock all three tough questions in the mock are in algebra that really drags up my difficulty level of the mock drastically even if i ignore these three out of the remaining eight six are moderate and there are two pure sitters so my focus really has to be on selecting these two questions and here it has to be strategic attempts i cannot randomly attempt all six i have to pick up questions where i am comfortable and try and attempt as many so here question selection becomes very critical if you look at the remaining two sections the same logic applies here here and here where question selection is really the key part now why do i say so even in geometry out of the nine questions here two thirds is tough moderate whereas one third three questions is either sitters or easy so identify these in modern math again out of the six questions two thirds is moderate and one third that's two questions is easy or sitter so everywhere yes there are sitters spread all across the sections or all across the areas there are easy questions over all these areas but you need to find them whereas there are a lot of moderate questions so their selective attempts become more important if i then break this up i can see that there are eight sitters in this mock and four easy questions in this mock so the number of sitters and easy questions is 12 which is slightly lower than what we had counted at around 15 whereas the number of moderate questions is 19 which is a little more then what we had predicted for moderate questions the number of tough questions is constant at 3 so that's fairly okay now what this does in terms of number of attempts is that because you have fewer easy questions they are tougher to find and so your hit rate here also goes down however having said that you still need to try and search these and attempt anywhere close to 10 questions in this part itself if you can attempt all 12 nothing like it but realistically 10 questions is what you should be trying among these 19 moderate you need to try and attempt somewhere close to 2/3 accounting for certain chapters where you are not very comfortable so even if you attempt 2/3 and do say 11 to 12 questions that should be decent you can even skip all three tough questions at the most you might be able to do one on a conservative basis even if i ignore that and say zero you might still be able to get close to 22 attempts in this mock so at a bare minimum you should be targeting 20 attempts but to be on the safe side to clear the sectional cut off i would say 22 attempts is a fairly good performance now we said there were eight sitters so let's have a look at the sitters or identify these sitters so our faculty have created a list of these eight questions which they have called sitters here please note that this list is by no means either exhaustive or the only possible list of sitters there could be some other question which we have classified as easy but you or your coach or mentor might find it to be a sitter which is absolutely fine there is a question that we call easy and three different students might call it sitter easy moderate or tough which is again absolutely fine because it really matters on perception and that student's comfort with that subject area but on the whole 
we feel that these are the eight questions that you should not have missed in any case for each mock you need to create a similar list of sitters for yourself and compare the two plus you need to have a look at these questions and check whether you attempted them if no why if yes did you get them right did the right approach if you got them wrong where did you go wrong because these are the questions that will really give you a lot of marks now like the earlier two sections we'll have a look at the difficulty of each question here as we said earlier the blue bars indicate the mcqs the pink or orange ones indicate the numerical entry questions now as you can see here because there were some 19 moderate questions you will see a lot of these lines here so here there is no real area where there is a clutch of easy questions except for this one stretch from 77 to 85 where i have three questions here and three questions here very close to each other so this is one area why where i might really have got a lot of marks on the other hand when i consider this entire stretch from 92 to 100 this is predominantly moderate to tough questions with just one sitter in between so here if you look at the placement of the easy questions they are all hidden between groups of moderate to tough questions and that is where it becomes very important to be selective in your attempts go and search for the right questions to attempt and then try them so looking at such a graph also helps you look at your attempts you know you can actually below this take a print out and actually below this try and uh, let's say map each question and say i attempted got it right wrong and attempted unseen whatever so that becomes extremely crucial let's have a look at a few questions and then see how they could have been solved now just to start with question 67 for instance if x is 6 plus 2 root 6 what is the value of root of x minus 1 upon whatever So firstly there are two ways to solve this one obviously because this is x is x minus 1 you can represent x minus 1 as 5 plus 2 root 6 now here because this is root i would try and eliminate it using some kind of let's say uh, you know some kind of a square so try and express this as a perfect square this becomes 3 Plus two, plus two into root three into root two. So I know that this is x minus one is nothing but root three plus root two the whole square. Now when I take the LCM here, I get this as x minus one plus one upon root of x minus one, which is x upon root of x minus 1 now i know that x minus 1 is this square so when i take the root i get root 3 plus root 2 here and x is nothing but 6 plus 2 root 6 now i can simply rationalize this and arrive at my answer the other would be to initially arrive at this and then just put in 6 plus 2 root 6 and 5 plus 2 root 6 here and still do the same thing so that was also possible the second question 68 year the the first part of this is pure fairly easy the perimeter of an isosceles triangle is equal to 14 the ratio of the lateral side and base is 5 is to 4 so here very clearly i have a 5 a 5 5 4 which is the sides when i take the ratios as 5x 5x and 4 i get 14 so these are the sides of the triangle now keep in mind that there is one formula which is clearly dedicated to isosceles triangles if you know that you can do this question in half a minute but let's assume for a minute that you do not remember the formula then there is also something called heron's formula where we say that the area of a triangle is s s minus a s minus b s minus c square root where s is the semi perimeter so here you need to take s as half of this perimeter which is 7 once you take that because you now have a calculator 
calculation of this becomes fairly easy. In the earlier era when there was no calculator, a lot of students would not prefer Heron's rule because of this calculation. Nowadays, this becomes fairly easy. Let's look at a few other questions. So, yeah, let's say if we take this, this is typically the kind of question where substitution from the options or taking cases really is very easy and desirable. We know that x, y, w, z are consecutive odd numbers. This is always divisible by what? Now, there are two ways to solve this. One is to take it as because the difference between odd numbers is 2, so I can take I can take it as k minus 3, k minus 1, k plus 1, and k plus 3. Take their squares. So essentially, when I take the squares, I will see that I get this as if I'm not wrong, I get this as 4 k square plus 20. So this will be 4 into k square plus 5. So this will always be divisible by 4. That's one way. The other would be I would actually take four consecutive odd numbers. Say 1, 3, 5 and 7. Now when I take these squares, I get 1 plus 9 plus 25 plus 49. This is nothing but 50, 59, 79, 84. Now when I just take this number, I can eliminate option 3. I can eliminate option 1. So I'm left with two options. Let's say I try the next set, which is 3, 5, 7, 9. So this remains constant, which is 49 and 25 is 74 and 83. This is 81. So 83 plus 81 is nothing but 164. 164 is not divisible by 6. It is divisible by 4. So my answer is 4. So one is the pure algebraic way to solve stuff. And one is using suitable values and then solving the question. So keep your mind open there and solve it accordingly. On the whole, if you see this particular mock, you will find that this was a fairly moderate mock. Had you tried this at the beginning of your preparation somewhere in April, you might have found it really tough. However, after solving 10-12 mocks by now, you should have been able to solve a lot of questions here. As we said, it had nearly moderate sections all across. So the number of good attempts would be somewhere around 17 for verbal, 14 for DILR and 22 for quant. If I take these values, I would say anywhere close to 50-51 attempts would be a fairly good performance as far as this mock is concerned. The analysis for all mocks from 25 to 12 before this are available on our official YouTube channel which is given in the link here. You can subscribe to that channel by clicking on this link. By hitting the bell button, you will be able to receive notifications every time a new video is put up. You can also put in your feedback or comments or questions on the thread below the video. Keep watching. Wish you all the very best and thank you.